Good morning, everyone. I've been married twice now. I know how to fix it. I saw it. I saw it. Huh? Uh, when I came in the parking lot, I thought, man, we have a heck of a turnaround for this thing. And then I realized we will have things going on on the other side, too. <clears throat> anyway, uh, thank you all for being here. Um, as you uh, know, we have a requirement, and I'll talk about that. In our bylaws, we have to have a general meeting twice a year. We've planned it so that it's always one at the beginning of the year. And then we have one in the October time frame, and that's to basically give our new officers and budget for the coming year. <coughs> so this is the first of those. A little later than we originally planned, but we're at the mercy of the community as sometimes as to where we get rooms, and this is the room that we got and the date we got. So anyway, thank you all for being here. Um, can you see the one in front of you there? I can see this one over here. Um, as I said, the general requirements of the meeting are that we're uh, supposed to be here for uh, our general meeting once, one of the two of the year. We had changed that. Originally it was four. Uh, we thought that was a little bit many as far as general meetings, so we have our coffees that kind of cover the rest of that. So welcome everyone. Thank you for whoever brought the food over here, and I'm sorry that I'm late. Um, first I want to talk a little bit about the reorganization of the board, in other words, the new changes that have come about. But before that, I'd like to recognize some people if they're here. Uh, first person I wanted to recognize was Kathy Van Routen. She is not here, I don't see her. She's up north. Okay. So anyway, I just did want to recognize her. She had recently come off the board. She's a uh, been on the board for over five years. In that time frame, she had served as both uh, uh, twice as our front desk administration and uh, concessions director, and then she very uh, kindly stepped in and became vice president for a year when Mark Forey had to step aside and I had to move the presidency. And so uh, Kathy has been very actively involved in the board for the past five years and still is actively involved in our Guild products and the things that are being developed for the coming year, and has also accepted my request to become the nominating uh, committee chairman uh, with Dan Stilver stepping down from that position after having done that for a number of years. Is Dan here? Yeah, been lucky so far. I'm drawing a blank on people being here. Anyway, Dan has done a great job in leading that, but it asked if he could be. Uh, Relieve that responsibility, and Kathy graciously stepped in and is going to take that coming on this year. So thank you, Kathy, even though you're not here. The other uh, person I'd like to recognize that stepped off the board is uh, Chad Eastwood. And I don't know if he's here either, so I'm 0 for 3 now. Uh, but Chad served last year as our equipment supply director. In that time, he worked with Mark Seipel in working on getting the wood room and doing some things there. Mark did a lot of work and, and has done a great job as far as um, organizing and getting a better inventory on our lumber. Uh, but Chad had worked with him on that. He also worked with Don on some things as far as tool room. So uh, for his year of service, we thank Chad for that also. And here's some for Chad. Okay, new people on the board. In place of those, we have, of course, Kathy Sunderland that's taken over the responsibility that uh, um, Kathy Ben Routen had as the front desk administration and uh, concessions director. And then Mark Parsons has taken over the responsibility of equipment and supply uh, director. So at this time, I'm going to embarrass everybody that's a member of the board and have them stand up for me that they're here. Okay, first of all, I want to thank each of them for what they do. But before you sit down, I want you all to kind of get an idea, because I don't know if everybody knows everybody and what they do, but I want you to get an idea of what they do. So, um, Matt Green is the director of our... Um, Managers, mentors. Charlie Bess over here is our advanced training director. Our 
Videographer in the back, Ed Kentaka, is our clusters and practicum director. Mark Parsons over here is our new equipment supply director. Kathy, of course, I mentioned, is our uh, director of equipment and supply. We got Sue Gordon over here who very diligently is recording minutes for us and does a very great job of that as long as other administrative responsibilities. Everybody knows Mike Thomas. If you don't, then you've uh, uh, missed it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Lived under a rock or uh, didn't come through the guild the normal way because if you did, you contacted Mike at some point. He's our treasurer and our jack of all trades. Um, um, I saw George. Is George here? George Craig? George is way in the back over there. He's our safety administrator. Uh, I'll get to those charts in a minute, but uh, I wanted to make sure I caught everybody. Uh, did I miss it? And then, of course, Larry up here is our communications thing. Chuck director. And then Chuck uh, Anderson is our new shop administrator. Did I miss it? And Fran isn't here, so he can't stand up. But Fran's, of course, our um, supply direct. I mean, our maintenance administrator. Uh, and if you don't know Fran, um, that's probably good because that means you haven't broken something in the shop. <laughs> also, I think that you all need to know who all the people are that lead our six. Um, we got Fran, of course, is our wood turning sig uh, a leader. Um, Mark Parsons leads our carvers. Jay Hubelbank is our tech sig lead. Lynn Hoos. Lynn Hoos is the wood check. Lynn's over here. And then Doug Scott is our railroad uh, uh, SIG leader. So give them all a hand, okay? <laughs> I hope you folks recognize that these people put in a lot of time to be able to make our guild operate and run the way they are, and I just thank them all for the service that they do for our guild. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the normal things that we would talk about at this meeting would be if we had any kind of bylaw changes, et cetera. We don't have any this year. Our bylaws uh, were updated last year and they haven't changed. And with the present CCRMP that the community put out, there were no necessary changes that we needed to make as far as our bylaws were concerned. So they stand as they were. We just did complete uh, an ops manual refresh. That Ops manual is available online at the website as well as on the new members website. It is also in the, the library. So um, the changes are going to be made um, on an as change requirement basis. So from now on, they will be continually updated and revised. But we went through a major change to kind of clean them up, get rid of some of the things that didn't apply anymore. And so they're out there now for everybody to use. Any questions of me before I think Larry takes over and does the instant gallery? Thank you. So as Tim introduced me, I'm, I'm Larry Manning. I'm, um, Guild and Community Relations, and I'll show you in just a moment what that means. But before we do that, I wanted to go over uh, uh, our instant gallery today or a quick show and tell. Even before that, though, I have a couple of questions to ask. Has everybody gotten a raffle ticket from Mike? If you haven't, raise your hand. Good. So that also is our little trick to how we know how many people attended today. So that's why that's important. I'm just trying to think there was something else on my list, but that's senior moment number two for the day, so we'll, we'll move along on that. So one of the reasons that we have this particular activity here in the Simpson Gallery is to show you some things that might stimulate your imagination. Anne, was it, I believe that's your name. I just met Anne this morning. Where are you? <clears throat> Who I ask is going to come up here first? Ruthie's. Ruth Ann? I knew there was an Ann in here somewhere. <laughs> Ruthie, come on up here, please. I'm going to embarrass Ruthie just a little bit. Ruthie, when did you get your gold badge? Yesterday. Yay! <laughs> and so thank you. 
that, that's, that, that helped to fix that senior moment. I'll let you stand here right now, and I'll, I'll take care of the senior moment before it disappears again. How many here have n never been to a meeting before? Welcome today. Welcome so very much. Our this group in here, I think I know of one who has not yet taken a class. Who has not yet taken a class. You have not back here, haven't you, sir? You're scheduled to come in next Monday, I believe. Several. Several. Wow. Excellent. Well, you guys are looking forward to a great time here coming on in here, okay? And I, I, I want to take a look around. If you see somebody here today that you don't know, make a point before you leave today to go ahead and introduce yourselves to them. Find out just a little bit about them. One of the strongest points of the Woodworkers Guild you will find if you haven't to, found out today is the camaraderie we share. We may go in there and not even have anything to work on that day, but just spending time with the others in there and chatting and learning about them and seeing what other folks do is great. So yesterday, Ruth Ann finished and he came up with, show us her what you came up with. I think you all recognize these items. This was our group one, though. The group one, right? And I told you I'd actually celebrate this. Can you see that in just a second, Ruth Ann? May I please? I wanted, to, I wanted to tell everybody, you're looking at somebody who had to go through clusters twice. Good for you. Good for you. I got sidetracked for a couple of years after I went through the first time, and I came back and did it whole thing over again. But this time, they had added the practicum. They didn't have this before. So you finish all the clusters, you had no idea what to do. So in the interim, they came up with, they said, let's make this. Why this? Well, if you think about this, if you haven't figured it out already, it requires you to use each and every one of our tools and adds to that the, the new, new uh, skills of gluing and clamping. And every other, essentially every other thing we do in the wood shop uses these same basic skills. Oh, sure, we may change the size, we may add some hardware to it, we may, in fact, make it circular or otherwise, but it's all these basic skills. So that's why we have this for you to go through. Then you... Child. To her charcuterie board, and this is something that's been added by, uh, since Ed has been on the, the cluster and the trainer, has added this to the group, and it's an excellent way for you now, new members, to go through and demonstrate their skills they learn without having to fight the glue and the clamping at the end. What's on the back? Blaze, uh, just pointing this out. This time, let me hold it up here. This time, Everybody got a chance to finish it up and walk over to see Blaze. I guess you were doing it yesterday, Blaze. And they put on the back, handcrafted by Ruth Ann. And it has the, and everybody's wondering, taking it home and wondering why it was handcrafted by Ruth Ann. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ruth Ann, for bringing those in today. And I want to thank the instructors, too, for their expertise and their patience. And all the other people that were in there for their support. Awesome. Thank you. So when you finish doing that, then you got a chance to sign up for advanced classes. I know some of them are tough to get into, but be, persevere. The thing that I put up, my little de demonstration for every open house, is all the things that I made by advanced classes. And by the time you go through each of the advanced classes, sure you're doing it just as the instructor showed you, but it is adding new skills to that basic cutting board. Now, if you take an advanced class and you blend it with this thing called the charcuterie board, and you let a little imagination happen, you can get this. And this is somebody, this is Phyllis Marks. She, she and her husband are down in the Galapagos right now. But Phyllis has been helping out on the drunken cutting board class. 
And you should see that influence sitting here in this charcuterie board. <coughs> And she got carried away and did it again. <laughs> and several of this, a lot of this was, she, uh, she uh, went around her house and, and, and grabbed spare wood that was laying around in different places and then added it to a piece of yellow heart that she had up here. So that worked out really well. She's not talking about furniture now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. This cat, come on up here. Let's get this. Okay. Can you hold that up? Or I can. So, my husband had poker night and they wanted to have a chili night. So I said, every man deserves a chili cooterie. So I made this for him. <laughs> Blaze, come on up here and talk about your items. I'm going to move your tree. Just want to remind you that there. So I'm Blaze um, with the Tech Sig. I'm in a product group, and these are just a few of the things that we make. Um, as the guild is doing with um, their products, we want to be able to do that from the Tech Sig standpoint. So the open house, we'll be able to tell, sell some tech things and make some money to get that new building. So I've got just, this one's taped, I haven't included it yet. Just very simple item where you just laser etch something and I just stained it black and put a little white background. Um, you might have seen this in the open house um, this past year. This was a one that we didn't, one we did not, um, I guess, get around to selling. Um, but, and somebody painted that. I put a walnut frame around it, it's just a multi-layer. Uh, there's like four or five layers on here and we paint it before we glue it, of course. There's like another one of these that is just stained little mountain biker, uh, multi-layer thing. Have its own little easel that you just burn on the laser. Clever. Clever. Um, same but different, little mountain scene. You can see a, a theme here. Here's just a really simple thing that I don't even know what to do with it yet. Hold it just, up. just burned a little, a few layers. Very simple. This maybe end up on the five dollar table. You know, a little, little uh, chops. Do you think? Five bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. <laughs> and then this one. Um, we, we did an easel for this one, and this is also just a, you know, another multi-layer. You can see how thick it is, and we put a hanger on the back. We'll put our logo, um, the Tech Sig logo on the back, and then we just stain them different layers. This one, we have a little bear with the cubs, and then also another one with a wolf, um, so that sort of thing. We're hoping to do more um, tropical things, um, but we need ideas. So I'm going to take a second to just say that not this Monday, but next Monday, the 12th at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a, an ideas meeting. I'll post, I'll send an email out to everybody and I'll post a flyer um, on the door at the shop reminding folks. So come on by, give any ideas about anything we can make um, for the uh, open house. And um, love to have you ideas. Thanks, folks. Melanie and Jean, are you there available? <coughs> this is Jean Yannick. Jean is a beat carter. And Jean managed to go off and have himself a little medical incident. And Melanie is his neighbor, and she said, how about we work there together? And Melanie has become his hands on the equipment as they go forward. So together, they have held, I'll hold this up. It, but anyway, I didn't break it. We're making our own handles for our charcuterie board. Did you want to say something about it? Well, yeah. Yeah, so this charcuterie board is 
it's using the technique that Bob Bass teaches in the drunken, drunken cutting board class. And we've done charcuterie boards with the metal handles on them, but this time Melanie suggested to use up some of our scrap wood and make handles out of wood. And so we have the kind of curved handles and we have them spaced off of the charcuterie board with little three quarter by three quarter inch risers. So, and I just want to say thanks to Melanie Schofield, who has been just great at helping me get into the wood shop and move from tool to tool. It's been a year and a half since I had my stroke and I was completely paralyzed on the left side of my body or the right side. And um, I've come a long way. I could you know, raise my hand up and everything and still going to therapy, I'm working at it. But thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Uh, Nick, are you around? Yeah. You want me to just hold it up? Or? Um, yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of uh, balls. I want you to all to be sure before you leave today to come look at this. Nick does turning. Nick turns at his house. Uh, Nick does balls. I don't want to have them all over the floor here. <laughs> I'm going to put them over here on this table so it'll be easier for you to see as you leave. But, I mean, that's, that's pretty remarkable. Oh, yeah. And they're all turned without a jig. And the purpose of turning all the balls is to give you control of your chisels. And all of them lie off. Very good. No jig them off. And you only hurt your head off once, right? Yeah. Now, this is an repetitive carving. I've been carving for 50 years. The key is here, big and small. Years old, and the one on your left hand is four years old. Thanks, Nate. CNC machine. I did the frame the normal way with a jig in, in the shop. Kind of simple, but kind of fun. Less is more. <laughs> and then as of lately, uh, Blaze has been kind enough to let me use his machine. <laughs> so I started doing some laser work. Just a simple picture for our house. A little crab. For all you cancers out there, there's your uh, there's your astrology sign. Yeah, this is my final joint. Seven layers. I did this on a laser And I finally think we have, thank you, Rich, I appreciate that. Um, I didn't see who brought the tree up here. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell us your name. I'm Rosanna. Um, finished in the, you know, the end of November. So this is a folding Christmas tree. Um, and you could arrange these however you want. They're quarter inch increment increase in, in length and then when you want to put it away, I don't want to ruin the balls, but you can then it'll store flat. You just turn them all flat. I got these on Amazon, and this is this is not stained. This is uh, Sepale 
Sapelli. Uh, Sapelli wood. Um, so even even the bottom will, the supports will go flat. <laughs> Is this going to be one of your products? Yes. So this is one of the products that looks like they're going to sign up to do that for the, for the open house. Uh, I believe that's everybody up here. Is there somebody else? Oh, whose are those? Yours. Oh. That's why I didn't know. So if, how many people have read the plank already? Gosh, I can't believe it. So you read my article. So what you've just seen is what I talked about in my article this morning. Is it's just our imagination, our passion, and our desire that holds us back. If we let that go, you can see what happens. This is the things that happen in our shop. Um, I just have a couple of things. This happens to be an end grain bowl that I turned in a piece of holly. And it was an experience, as you can see, I ran into a multiple different grain directions and et cetera as I turned it. And then this is another live edge bowl that I turned myself. Um, this is about all the time I get is to turn little bowls because when I'm a lathe mentor, that's about the only time I have to turn right now, so other than instructing. But again, I think that if you look around the shop, you just see amazing things happening. Um, because people let their imaginations go from beginning to the experienced woodworker. And I just think that it's amazing to watch what we actually accomplish in our shop. Okay, is that all we have up here? Thank you very much, everybody, for bringing your items in here today. And for those of you all who didn't bring one today, don't be shy about that. We're not going to make fun of anything here because all of us have been where you are and starting out stuff. And the biggest thing that we find with doing this is that Tim just mentioned, it stimulates the imagination. Most of us, that, that's our limitation in here is we've got to think of something new. And it's interesting to see in the years I've been here, somebody will bring in something new and then so we'll spend the next six months and everybody will be making that item. And, it's, it's always, and everybody puts their own little twist on that. So I mentioned earlier um, that we, we're going to uh, go through all our, several of our directors today, but I just wanted to let you know what is on my responsibility list on the board, these items that you see right here. So if you've got any issues with any of those products, those items that you see as you go through, I'm the guy to, to fuss at, to come see. But the other piece of that is, is I would certainly like for for you all to consider stepping forward and volunteering and letting me teach you how to maybe take over some of these particular areas. The concept of Sun City with all of our clubs and all that is a volunteerism. We really can only get them to work well with by volunteerism. And your opportunities in the wood shop are far better than many of the other clubs to do just that. And so this is an opportunity. It doesn't necessarily mean you spend an awful lot of time uh, doing these things, but when the time ha comes up, you would have the skills. And you know, some of us are getting just a bit long in the tooth, and it's maybe time for us to step back a bit. So appreciate that. If you get contact me, I'd be happy to do that. Like they say at Hogwarts, help is always given with Hogwarts when it's needed, and we'll teach you how to do every one of these skill sets as you need it. Any questions at all on what we've talked about so far and, and any of that my, my responsibilities or duties? I'm going to have our treasurer come up here now and talk with you. What, uh, what was not mentioned beforehand is one of the mandatory things at general meetings is we must go through uh, a financial thing. and so. Mike is uh, going to go through that with you now. All right, thanks, Larry. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, 2023, where we finished. Um, we finished uh, very well. Um, as you can see down the 
the third item from the bottom, we put $126,000 into CDs last year, which I think is uh, remarkable. Um, that's, we're going towards our uh, building fund activity, but we had a very good year. We had revenues of 268 versus a plan of 239, um, and our expenses were 325 versus a 239 uh, plan or, or forecast. But because of the way that we have to report uh, cash, uh, we're strictly a cash uh, basis club, just like every other club here, uh, we have to report the transfer of money from the checking account to the CDs as an expense. So if you take that 126 out of the 325 uh, that we beat our, uh, our forecasted expenses. Uh, so again, we were, we're doing very well. Um, we have around $17,000 in the checking account now. That's probably a low water mark for us. Uh, and that we have $350,000 in CDs uh, towards our uh, building. Tim is in constant communication with Brad to try to uh, figure out why the community doesn't want to spend our money uh, and add on to our, to our shop. But uh, we are certainly pushing with everything we have uh, to get that done. Um, as far as this report, this is a, a very boring report, but it's required by the community of every club. It's called a CC90, uh, and it's where we tell the, uh, the community uh, where we started with as far as funds are concerned. So we started with uh, 2023 of 65000 in the checking account and 224 in the uh, CDs for a total of 289, we finished with 359 thousand dollars, or we grew our reserve, or our assets by 69 thousand dollars. So the community looked at this just to see the health of the club, especially the clubs that are struggling, uh, of which we are not one of. And then they asked various questions about uh, prepaid dues and. Uh, interest earned and uh, various other things, number of checks written over $500, so that they can come in and review the club. Uh, we get reviewed about once every other year. Uh, other smaller clubs get reviewed about once every five years. Uh, so our total membership uh, as of uh, the end of the year uh, in 23 was 226 uh, new members, 957 members total. Uh, now I want to review what I normally review when we go through a monthly meeting. This is uh, the February financial report that was given to the board, uh, and this is what they see every month. We look at our, our uh, membership. Uh, you can see we went from 864 and 22, eight, uh, 957 and 23, and we're currently at 870. So our renewal rate uh, was not as great as it has been in the past. Uh, but uh, we normally get a lot of renewals in, in January. I think we're going to be pushing those back to February uh, because we just don't seem to have those guys coming in yet. Our 24 budget of membership is 144 new and 857 renew for a total of 1,001. And as I said, we're currently at 997. Uh, uh, excuse me, we're currently estimating 997. Uh, for this year. And that's mostly dependent, A, it's dependent on renewals, obviously, but it's dependent on uh, the way we uh, bring new members in. We throttle that up or down based on the cluster class uh, uh, offering that we have. And this year, this, this year we added uh, two tracks in June, which we didn't last year. Uh, so that should help us come in with a little bit better membership. As far as the money for the last time the board met, oops. I don't have a copy of that, but uh, that just shows the uh, checking uh, uh, of uh, 87 85 at the end of the, uh, or during the, for the meeting uh, of the board members. Uh, 39,000 of that uh, was expense, and of that 39, 26 was our last addition to our CDs. 
So uh, we had roughly 30,000 income and about 13,000 in uh, actual expenses. And there you see our $350,000 of, um, of CDs. Uh, I think I looked up and we're gonna make, I think right around $16,000 this year just on interest alone. We're getting right at 5% uh, for most of our CDs. Here's a graph of our membership uh, finishing at the 1001 mark at the top uh, green mark. Uh, below that are our renewals, 857. And then you can see our historical uh, uh, new member uh, inflows. Here's our cash and CDs uh, over the years, starting with 2016. Uh, and you can see in 2019, we started working towards the addition of the uh, new building. Uh, and again, we have roughly $351,000 in our building expansion fund. Uh, here's that building expansion fund. When we started in 18, uh, the blue line represents what we had forecasted. Uh, that included some dues increase, uh, but other, pro other programs that we had uh, that would come online at various stages. And as you can see, we, we estimated that we needed around $240,000 or so for the building expansion uh, up until the community decided that, well, they don't want us to contribute some of it. They want us to contribute all of the cost of the building. So that's why we're uh, steadily going on up. Uh, and that's what you see on the uh, goal line that finishes there. One other chart that you rarely see is uh, what Aubrey Edwards uh, started was cost of running the shop. And he wanted to know, without all the hoopla of everything else that we have going on, our sales of lumber, uh, any, anything that we generate revenue for uh, that offsets some of our expenses, what's, what's the actual cost of, of expenses that we have to incur at the shop uh, that aren't offset by any income? So uh, we've looked at these five areas, the systems, which is the, uh, the, both the computers as well as the um, uh, surveillance system, uh, ca cameras and things like that, shop expense, uh, safety expense, maintenance, and admin. We looked at those and we uh, looked at them on a yearly basis and we compare those to uh, membership. And if we start in 2017, uh, our, our cost was running around $51 a member just to satisfy these five uh, categories. And I'll walk across from you starting on 17, uh, $51, 49, 48. At COVID, it dropped down to $37 a member. Uh, 2021 was 46, 22 was 43. And last year was $41 a member. So we're comfortably under our $50 dues which is, uh, is the goal of the, uh, of the uh, board, just to try to make sure that we cover our expenses and then all the other stuff with the sales uh, is just the gravy and that's where we put into our building fund. Right. Anybody have any questions on any of that? Yes, ma'am. Are donations tax deductible? No, None, no donations. Uh, I'm sorry, the question was, are donations tax deductible? No donation to a club in Sun City is tax deductible. We're not a 501c3 corporation. The, the community is not. They are a, uh, we are a nonprofit, obviously, but uh, we're not tax deductible. Yes, sir. Is there uh, any, uh, any numbers as to uh, members that don't renew every year? Yeah, uh, the question is uh, roughly how many members do we not, do we have that don't review? We have been running generally around nine, eight, nine percent uh, non-renewals. We're up to around 17 percent this year, and I don't know what to attribute that to. We're going to go out and start polling these members to see why they didn't renew or why they haven't as of now. Uh, but as I said, normally I get 50 or so in January. I've gotten some, but not anywhere near what we get in the past. So I don't know whether people are just delaying that. Uh, or they're actually not going to renew. Yes, sir. If you said uh, that the uh, association wants us to pay for building the expansion of the, of the uh, shop, 
Um, what's the projected cost today of that if we have 350? So the, qu the question was, I made the comment that the community wants us to pay 100%. Maybe that was a little tongue in cheek, uh, but uh, they do want us to pay a greater proportion than the five or 10 or 15% that we had been paying. We had been paying up to around 20%, I guess. Uh, and then the second part of this question is what is the anticipated cost? We don't know. We have no control over that at all. That's our problem. We, we go to the community and said, here's the design, and Tim drew up a great design. I, don't, I think he, he shared it with you guys. Uh, we then give that to the community and it goes into this black hole that uh, 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 Brad is working with an architect, and I think he's trying to help us. He's trying to maybe cover some of that cost in some other projects, but the architect is working with that, but they never will come back and let us know what the anticipated cost is. And we have no control. We can't go out and get a bid. We can't uh, price something up because they don't believe whatever we give them. So uh, we're just kind of held hostage. Front row, Mike. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, ma'am. the 50th for the construction, what about the equipment? Well, uh, it's to cover both. I suspect it will eat up everything on the construction. <laughs> Uh, the, co the question is, what's the cost of the anticipated equipment? It's right around $100,000. But that we can come into piecemeal. We have one of each machine, uh, and we picked, uh, because the guild was paying for it, we picked the most expensive machines we could find, the biggest machines we could find, and thank you, guild, for doing that. Uh, but then uh, from now on, we'll be buying lesser uh, expensive, le least uh, cost machines. Uh, to fill out. We're looking to get five CNC's, lasers, and 3D printers uh, to, for a total of six for everything. But then we have to buy the auxiliary equipment such as the vacuums and maybe air compressors and things like that. So around $100,000 to answer your question is what we're looking at. But again, we can come into that. We can also establish some other programs where people can donate uh, for those too. Any other questions? Yeah, Tom. Is there any chance that the community association can get their hands on our money? Uh, the question is, can the community get their hands on our money? It, it is their money to start with. Uh, it's not ours. Any dollar that comes into the building is theirs. Any piece of equipment we buy is theirs. Uh, so uh, it is their money. The question is, can they take it and appropriate it to build a road or something? And eh, I, that's very doubtful. But it, I can't. I can't say no. Let me get this from Jay first. Yes, sir. Mike, uh, we're, a, we're a wood shop, and I'm trying to decide why 3D printer identifies itself with a woodworker's deal. Yeah, that's a good question. The question is, why does a 3D printer? Uh, uh, come in and under the guise of a wood shop. And don't forget that we are the Sun City Woodworkers and Model Makers Guild. So it comes in under that. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, there are a number of different uh, mediums that uh, that 3D printer can work in, but I can see some combinations of that printer being done along with some woodworking activity. It's not as strong as the CNC, or the laser, but I think there's some tie-ins there. But that's a good question. Jay? Yeah, the question is, in the past, whenever we talk about expansion, uh, Dan Stove has done an estimate. Has he done an estimate to this? Yeah, the, qu the question so was, have we provided the uh, Sun City an no, estimate? No, at least for ourselves, we yeah. what an estimate would be. Uh, Dan has one. No. He did, no, he, he, did, he did one for a concept early on, but he hasn't done one for the latest. For the, the latest, latest. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it, it doesn't pay us to do it, Jay. It just well, just for our own dollar. But you know, if you go out and look at construction costs, uh, and then uh, versus our uh, square footage, uh, we think we're in pretty good shape. But but then we talked to Brad, and he has this number in his mind that you have to finish everything just like this. Well, that's not a wood shop. We're walls and a floor and a ceiling. So uh, I think he's finally coming around to that. But uh, we're hoping this uh, architect's going to come in. Uh, and, and help us out. Dennis. Have we uh, modified or changed our plan for the expansion from, I think we were going to another 5,000 square feet or something like that? Have we considered yes. adding a smaller addition? 
I'll let the, I'll let the, especially to obtain a space where we can put this high tech stuff right. away from that. Right, I'll let, I'll let Tim uh, speak to that. Uh, I'll just pre uh, preface what he's going to say was, we at one time we're looking to put five thousand uh, dollars, five thousand uh, feet over both ends of the building. That has been completely shut down by the community. They will not let us do that. They have no interest at all in adding on to either end of the building. Uh, so we came out with a, a, a structure coming out front that Tim has designed. Again, I'll let him speak to that. And we, that was for the specific purpose of us putting this high-tech equipment in there, getting it away from the dust and the grime and everything else. Uh, I'll let Tim go ahead. Uh, Dennis, to ask your, answer your question specifically. Yes, we have a new plan. We presented it in October when we had the meeting, and I can get it out and show it again uh, at the next uh, coffee if we want to. But the intent is like uh, Mike said, we're going to add 2,000 square feet, around 2,000 square feet to the front of the building on the end near the garage door, but on that end coming out where the tree is. Uh, it would be a technology space only with the conference room or resource area moved to the front of the building and that would leave us the area inside the shop that's currently the resource room for other things that we could use either making a small meeting room and expanding the tool room or whatever but it's up to our pleasure as to what we want to do with that uh, we'd also take the office and turn it into a rest a new another restroom in the building so that we could essentially if you want to call it block off the front part of the building and make it technology only. It could be accessible to those that have use and they would not even have to come into the wood shop. So yes, we have a new plan. It's a completely different approach. The community, or at least I can say Brad Phillips, was very impressed with it. And because of that, this is the first time that the community has actually moved to go talk to the architect about our plans. The architect has our plans. He's looking at them and pricing them for the community. This will be our first stab at a good number from them that they could buy into as far as a number for what would be our expansion. So I think that we've actually seen very positive direction in the last year in this expansion from what we've seen in the past, but we still have to get it before the board and get them to approve even though we have the money or we think we have at least a good portion of the money to do this, they still have to make the final decision and we have to be able to get in front of the board and that's what we gotta get the numbers from Brad and then push that forward. Any other, any other questions on the expansion while I'm here? Yes? You can't just talk to the board president directly, you have to go through Brad? Well, I mean, it's, I mean, Brad's going to ultimately have to make the recommendation. He has plans and he, and he controls the capital expenditures is where we fall. And so he's going to make a recommendation to the community. If we do it directly, you know, we've been shot down for years by the, the board anyway. So, I mean, getting Brad on our side and having him help us push it that way is going to be better than us going the other direction. But I feel that the board president, I believe, works for Pulsey, correct? The board president does, yes. Okay. And isn't that a sales feature for her to sell well, more homes? We, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tell them that every year, every day, et cetera. But what happens is when it comes to these kinds of issues that have to do with the community, typically the board president steps back because they're Pulsey and then let the community element of that board make that decision because it's related to your expenditures, what you have to pay as far as annual uh, homeowners association, so they let the community portion of the board help make that decision, and they tend not to step in, even though it is, like you say, to their advantage to have it to sell with. They sell it with it every day. I mean, they, you see the tours that they do in our shop. Any other questions? And I'm open to any questions. If you have a question to me, send it to me because these are questions I can use to push toward the, toward the community and say, look, at our membership are wondering what's going on, where we're going. We keep pressing. I press Brad on a monthly basis uh, to find out what his status is with the architectural in information. He's, he uh, has co keep, continues to come back with a reason why not. And, you know, it can feel like he's stalling me, but... Um, I'm going to continue to hound him until my last day of the presidency, and then I might get assigned to do it after that. Who knows? 
but I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can because I believe this is the right direction for our shop. What, what do they give us reasons for not letting us take our money off? <clears throat> I think it's the first time that they've actually had a cub, club that's actually come forward and said, we're willing to spend the money. But the problem is they're thinking of where their expenditures are, et cetera, and trying to keep your homeowners associations dues down. And every time that there's a capital expenditure in their mind, that's an increase in our dues. That's the way they look at it. And so, unfortunately, everything else is built into their other budgeting process, part of the dues. But the capital expenditures, any time that they spend capital in that pot, because they have three different pots that they look at, the capital part of it, they consider that as a direct impact to your dues on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis. Can we build it ourselves? <laughs> we can't do it ourselves. We can't contract outside it. We can't, we can't do any contracting. That's the problem we have. Get the plan, but use the labor in the room to build it. Well, we can't even do that. I mean, we've done it in the shop before. When we did the shop, when it was initially built, we finished it out. I think that the community is actually, at least Brad is starting to realize that we can still do that for ourselves and that would be a way to save money in his mind, to make it more affordable. And that's what we hope is the plan going forward when we get there. But the actual structure has to be built by the community, the infrastructure has to be done by them, it has to be done to code, it has to be done to the regulations of Buford County. You just can't throw a building up, unfortunately, it's not that way. It's a community access. It has to be something that we can all safely exist in. Yes? Well, and that's the reason the community is basically is, is the, the problem. They're looking at the insurance impact that this community has been burdened with, and that's why they have slowed down any capital expenditures this year. Zero capital expenditures. Yeah, they have zero this year. We're, we're trying to push forward and say, you don't have to spend any money. We're going to... We're going to bring the money to the table, but they still haven't moved forward on that. Yes, sir. Have we been able to look at what the impact of the would be if it was built? Is there a way to kind of feel that out so we well, can sell it to the community? Well, we, we could, but the, the problem is the way the community looks at HOA fees increases as they look at the total expense that we would burden them with that year. They divide it by the number of house tops. And they do, it. they do it on like as if it was going to happen in one year and that's it. They don't amortize it. They don't do anything with it. They just look at it as a one-time expense that we all have to burden ourselves with that one year. Any other questions? I can see I, yes. Now with the other 1,500 homes that are ready to be built, are we going to be able to accommodate population of people that are coming in? No choice. We have no choice. I mean, we have what we have. We can, all we can do is, if, you know, all we can do at some point, if we can't operate the shop safe, we have to tell the community that we're going to have to limit the members. That's, I mean, that's where we're at. I mean, we have to look at it that we can't close our amenity to anybody. If someone wants to join they have, and they go through the process, they can be a member. Can we not take membership? What do you mean? Well, we, we well, can't. If we get, we can if, if, if can we not bring that down to two members? A we month? we can by by limiting the number of foster slots that we offer. Yeah. Right now, we're booking uh, the last slot in May. We opened up in June a little bit, uh, but yeah, depending on how many slots we offer and how many that we feel that we can get safely through the program, that's really the key. Uh, but I don't think we can limit much more than what we've got right now. I mean, uh, and to limit, I mean, if you think that we're struggling right now to get the community to do something, if we were to start to say we have a limitation on how many people, or we start to shut the shop down, then we can just kiss it, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, because their attitude is going to be you're not, you know, you're not meeting the needs of the community. And so we need to continue to service them as best we can and the only other way to solve this problem would be to draw them all into the shop and let them see the activity that's going on in there. But I don't know that that's going to even move them. You know, right now, we just got to continue pushing in the direction we have. Again, this has been a five-year slog that I know of. In the five years, and I know it's been longer than that, but in the five years I've been a member, I've seen us slogging through this process. And, you know, we're going to just have to keep pushing the, the noodle uphill, so to speak. Any other questions? 
Good discussion. Thank you. Very quickly, we have a late entry into the show and tell. I brought it up front here. Steve, I'm just going to talk about it. We've we got to keep moving here, okay? Steve Altman walking this direction right here. This is a very heavy table, Mike. This is a table that he, Steve's, Steve's the master of big furniture and uh, heavy furniture he comes in here. But this particular thing is also that blend again of some of our construction and then the work with the, this is the laser, is that correct? Of a, of a dragon that goes on there. So we'll leave it out here as you leave today. You can kind of take a closer look at it. And this is Steve right here. Wave your hand, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And Morning. Anybody remember the 50s? Musically. Musically. Do what? I'm coming in this morning, driving in this morning. Anybody remember a song, uh, My Friend the Witch Doctor? Yeah. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah. Remember those lyrics? Good, now we'll all suffer together. <laughs> Just can't get it out of my head. <laughs> Um, okay, so a little summary of what we did last year. Last year we put 24 students a month through June and then we changed it a little bit up in the fall and we engaged the shop for 54 hours of time. In 2024, we're going to do 16 students a month and we're going to engage the shop in 44 hours of resource time. So we're doing eight fewer students but we're giving back to the shop 12 additional hours. So you've heard about the increase in, in uh, our membership there are 12 additional hours to be given back to that membership. Um, for, this is something that um, really geared to the shop managers. The graduation date for cluster classes is now printed on the bottom of the badge. So if, um, if there's ever a question when someone graduated, look on the bottom of the badge and you'll see that month. Um, Refresher training. This is something that we started up this year uh, for all of you, not for students, but for all of the guild members who maybe have been gone for a while, uh, are not comfortable with a skill on a particular machine, or want to get an enhanced skill on that particular machine. These refresher classes are open to you. You sign up on Eventbrite, just like you do any other class. They are held on the first Tuesday of cluster classes. And generally, except in months where we have training or something else going on and everything gets shifted, generally that's the first Tuesday of the month. So all of the cluster classes plus the scroll saw and the panel saw, which were taken out of clusters about a year ago, are all taught again that first Tuesday afternoon uh, of the month. And again, sign up on Eventbrite. And of course, I'm always up here promoting clusters. If anybody wants to join our group, we've got a tremendously talented group of instructors. We have some people that just graduated yesterday. Where are you? I know you're here. What do you think of our instructors? Great bunch of people. If you want to join that, that group of people, we've got a great program, we've got great benefits, we've got uniforms, we've got great pay. In fact, one of the instructors got a 3X raise yesterday, and Blaze got a 5X raise. Where's Blaze? There he is. Blaze jumped in yesterday, and he's responsible for that customizing of the boards that we just started this month. So if you are interested, contact me. I'd be happy to sit down with you, and we can figure out how you can join our team. Questions? <coughs> okay. Well, following right behind uh, the basic training is advanced training. And uh, one of the things that we need is some instructors. There's a number of classes that have not been taught in a long time. A couple of them haven't even been, the, it's been so long ago that they weren't even defined effectively or properly. So um, two of those 
is one is on planning woodworking projects, getting into the basics of understanding what plans are, uh, making plans, wood selection, wood identification, a lot of the fairly uh, initial efforts that's required to create a plan of your very own. Uh, and I'm looking for someone to volunteer. I had uh, one person. I think we got a volunteer, somebody on the hook for that one. Well, he hasn't <laughs> said yes yet, so. Well, and you typically need, to say, yeah. ideally you need two uh, instructors, but uh, that, uh, uh, unless it's during the work day, which that one can, or open shop day, which that one could be because it's pretty much in, in the uh, resource room. The next one is a memorial box class. That's been defined for six, seven years now, and uh, it would be nice to get it re constituted, uh, except focusing on a, a specific set of bits that are ideal for that uh, particular box. And the reason, you'll notice a lot of the classes um, in advanced training have a specific tool or a specific bit that you may not be familiar with or a jig, and it'll explain, uh, the focus of the class is on explaining how to do that and do a project along the way. And that would be the case with the uh, Memorial Box class. Now these other classes are actually fairly well defined, there's pho photographs already done, there's step-by-step -step instructions, and we just need people to um, step in and say I'd be willing to take that on. For example, there's a juice cutting, uh, 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 a cutting board juice groove class that uh, you put together, Paul Zimmerman put together, that it would be great if we could get that reconstituted again. And so the focus on that one is on the juice group jig that we already have. There's an acoustic phone class. Uh, one of the things we noticed along the way is that some of the people coming in the shop don't actually know how to measure things effectively uh, and how to you know, apply that to a planning process. And so that one is focused on making a custom acoustic phone stand for your phone. So it's you know about taking those measurements and turning it into a plan. There's an expanding trivet which is focused on using the drill repetitively and accurately to make a, a trivet that essentially can uh, expand and contract. There's a data matrix tray class that uh, focuses on using the data blades to cut and then interlock wood, uh, the data blades on the table saw, because we didn't have a class that talked about how to set up the data blades and, and the tools we have associated with it. And then, of course, the picture uh, frame class, which everybody needs to do a picture frame one time or another, which is focused on precise cutting and some of the tools and the pinner, which is now in the maintenance room, if I remember right. Uh, but the pinner that we have that uh, can help uh, force those corners of, the, of your photographs to be square. So that's another class. There's a rather dovetail class, because we have a dovetail uh, set up for the, C for the uh, router that uh, needs to be brought back to life. A folding table class, uh, the, a while back I put together one that done a fish table or a turtle table that essentially is your typical TV stick, uh, folding table. And the original reason we did that is because we were mass producing reindeer and had all this extra poplar and so that just <laughs> sucked it all up. Uh, but, once, but this is now essentially redefined as a, a, a standalone class. And then there's an anniversary wine capsule which is focused primarily on the safe setup and use of the router. So those are examples of classes that uh, if you have an interest in or want to get deeper into it, and, and of course as, as the basic training sort of uh, shifts around a little bit, that might free up some trainers that are working there to still get a P card uh, in the future uh, if you sign up. And another thing I just wanted to briefly state is that this is gonna be my last year as the advanced training director, so if you wanna dive into that, uh, come, come early and come often because uh, there's a little bit of a ramp up time. Uh, talk to Tim or, my, or myself and we'll uh, get with Kathy on the nominating committee to get this started. So, questions? Nothing. Okay. Kathy Sunderman. Um, when I sent out my first listserv, I got at least 
half dozen people wanting to know if I was with waste management. I am not. <laughs> so if you see Kathy Sunderman open it, I don't send any spam out or anything. So our first order of business is November 2nd. I had so many people this year say, I missed the sale last year. I was on a trip. If you have a trip planned for November 2nd, you have time to reschedule it. Start today. <laughs> Not a great time to travel. It's a great time to be here. We will need all hands on deck that day, so please go ahead and put it in your calendar. Um, we, for new people, we clean the shop. We blow it down on Wednesday, and then we come in, and it is pristine by the end of day Thursday. Friday before the sale is full of meetings. All of our teams get you together, let you know what you need to do that day, how to do it. So just save those dates for us. And let, you can let your friends know that that day is up there and pray for no rain that day because it makes it very tough to move everything inside. So save the date. Second thing we did getting ready for that sale, which seems a long way away right now, but it really is not, is we had our show and tell on January 22nd. And these are the wonderful people. Michelle Bess is back. Yes. Kathy Van Roden. Um, Judy Jones, Peggy Randall, Mike Thomas, and myself sat through some presentations of some really cool products. They are all in the folders over on that table. What we ask, especially new folks, is go sign up. You can lead a team, you can co-lead a team. Your teammates may only be five people. It may only take five people to make the ten products we want for the sale. But it's a great way to build camaraderie. It's a great way to learn to lead a small team. And it's a good way just to jump in and get your hands on a product that you would not have made otherwise. So learn to use those tools, have great mentors along all the way. And we've got some super people signed up to help that will teach you a lot. All right, we have about 18, 20 projects over there. Michelle Bess is going to be our um, leader this year. She keeps up with everything. She will email your team leaders, keep you going, like what you need. We provide the product for that. So all you do is sign up for a team. You get your wood or your screws or your handles. We will take care of that. And when we ask them, we try to get them back in by the end of August, I think. That way we know what we've got going into the sale. And all of you are going to travel before the sale, so do it before you travel. All right. Um, those folders will be in the resource room today. If we don't fill them up before we leave, I am going to lock the doors, and no one can leave until it is full. But should that not happen, they will be there to be signed up later in the day. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Now, we're going to have a contest. The contest is going to run through May 27th because we need boards. We do not need practicum boards because we get those from all the classes and the instructors are great to make an extra one. What we need is your innovation and creativity. So what the, the guidelines are, they have to be given to us by the 27th of May. We'd like you to keep them under the 18 by 24 size so you don't have to make a chili cootery. Just make something. People want different sizes, different shapes, different ideas. So if you take a drunken cutting board class and you want to go the next step and make one of those, please do it and enter the contest. This will be a donation. We will not be paying for your wood or your screw. Well, we always pay for your screws, but we will not be paying for that product. It will be a full donation to the shop because on the day of the sale, one of the key tables is our special cutting board table. They rush over to find out what you've done that's exceptional. We've had ideas like um, board sets, so you can get a bar board and a regular board, because let's face it, ladies, we put out a lot more things than just one board can handle. So be creative, show us your work, and we'll have a prize for you. We are going to announce the winner at the May Coffee. And the way we're going to handle this is you get to decide who had the most creative board. We're going to give you a ticket, much like you got today. You will get to put your ticket in the whatever system we decide for the one board you like the best. And that person will have bragging rights for a year. And we're going to have a gift certificate to go along with that. So, yay, who's going to make a board? Come on, the way you like the door. <laughs> and here's some ideas, and we've been asked, how do we marry Texas with the woodworking? And here's some great examples. I mean, you can go all out and do all woodworking, or you can marry it with our Texas group and come up with some exquisite boards that people would love to have in their homes. 
So here's some ideas. May 27th, get them in to us. Questions? Questions about the sale? Questions about how that runs for new people? We send that out on an email. Yes, definitely. I will send the um, parameters for the contest out on an email. Not from Waste Management, men, from me. <laughs> I don't know, well, they had a WM after the list, so I've been everybody. I guess with all the new yellow top trash cans, they got really excited and thought I could answer that question. <laughs> it stores wood if you're not using it. It's a great box. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to apologize to you all right now. I can't match her energy. I don't have contests. I don't have fun prizes. And as a matter of fact, when you see my slides, you're going to say, why is he telling me this stuff? And I know this stuff already. But it has to do with trends we've been seeing in both the tool room and uh, the wood room lately. Um, wood. Being returned back after being cut needs to be at least four feet in length, okay? It could be larger, but please, not less than four. You can probably go in there once a week, I guess, Mark, and you'll see things that are not uh, of adequate length. Also, when you're buying wood, anything a quarter of an inch or less goes down to the, the lower whole number. So if something is five and a half, it's five. If it's five and three quarters, well, Read the, read the manual, that's how it's written. Well, I, but I'm sorry, yes, hey, I'm a, I already apologized, so I'm not gonna apologize again. Five and a quarter, that's right, thank you. Um, and if the shop manager or the assistant shop manager pulls out the ruler next to the tape measure and manages, or, and, and looks at that, don't be offended, we're just checking. Sometimes you find people who don't understand, like they'll be like me, they'll worry about it. Um, and when you're done cutting something, please put it back in the correct location. Mark has taken to writing on each board that seemingly comes in what stuff is, and I still see it in the wrong bin, okay? So please try to help them out in doing that. Tool room. Hang a chip when, you when you're taking a tool out. It's easy to do. I know sometimes if you get the chip, you gotta go out to the front office, get them, but th please do it. Clean your tools before they come back. Okay, and last but not least, let me help you. If there's something you think the shop needs, and we don't have it, let me know. We'll evaluate it, and if you know, we need to, we can go get it. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is to, to thank Rob Lang. He saw me looking at the pinner last week. Does everybody know what the pinner or the underpinner is in the shop? It's that thing that Charlie mentioned that drives a wedge into two, into the corner of two sides of frame. And it hadn't been working. And Larry Manning had asked me to look into buying a, a replacement. So before he did that, I wanted to look at and find out why it is not working. It was a $2,000 machine, and this one was ancient. Uh, Rod Lane came over and helped me look at it. We ended up taking it apart. He was able to repair it, and he did this all in his own time in the shop. It wasn't the uh, pre-planned shop maintenance day. We got it to work, or he got it to work, I should say. And uh, thanks for doing that. Um, it, however, will have probably a very short lifetime because there's a critical piece in there that is needed. Um, it's kind of worn, and I think uh, Fran looked this for a replacement. We can't find it because the machine is so old. I yeah? found three. You found three? Yes. Good. Okay, so we got new life. So you just saved us $2,000. And that's all I have. Thank you.
know it's important when George gets up because we hardly ever have safety talk to us, so that means there's something he wants to say. I just had two quick slides. The first one is about the saw stop. The saw stop was a great table saw. The only issue is that when people take the blade guard off, they have to put the uh, anti-kickback paws up and locked away. Sometimes they don't put them back down. And be cutting a large piece of wood with no kickback protection is rather dangerous. So on all equipment, when you walk up to it, think that the person in front of you wasn't malicious, but they don't have a memory much better than mine. They may have forgot to put the equipment back the way it needs to be. And that's not just on this. There are lathes that when you plug them in, they start up automatically because somebody forgot to turn them off. So on every piece of equipment, take a look at it before you start. But especially on the saw stops, make sure those anti kick uh, paws are down or you may have a rude awakening and somebody behind you may have a worse awakening. The other thing is, is walkways. Uh, I made a comment at the board meeting that we have a 100 pounds of wood shop and a 50 pound bag. And the problem is trips and falls take out more of us than any other accident. Be real careful about where you leave things and please don't leave them in walkways. If you can't find a place to put your stuff, talk to the manager or the mentor, they'll help you out. But don't leave traps for other people to fall down because it could be an ugly day for everybody. Any questions, comments? Thank you all. So if, you, um, if you've all read the plank, you saw a, a beautiful picture of both uh, Duncan and uh, Paul putting down that new strike. I mean, a good one, two good pictures, I guess. One from the back side, one from the front side. Jay. Good morning, everybody, and it still is morning. My name is Jay Hubblebank. I am the current president of the Technology SIG. That is the newest special interest group of the wood shop. Just going to go over a few things. That is our logo. We decided to come up with logo, and that's what you'll see around now and then. Okay, we have four disciplines. We have a laser etching and engraving. You see some of the work. Uh, we have our CNC machine. You see a little bit. Uh, you have not seen any 3D printing here, though Charlie does have something in the po his pocket that he just printed uh, the other day. Um, and of course, the last item is microelectronics, Arduino and Raspberry Pi. That's more suited for the model makers part of our guild than the woodworkers. And just uh, something just to show you, that's what laser engraver looks like. You've all seen it. It's right in the middle of the building. On the left side shows you something very simple that you can do. And on the right is something a tad more complex. And you saw some complexity this morning, particularly Rich's owl. That was a great looking owl. Okay, the CNC, if you've been in the quiet room, you've seen the CNC. If you haven't, there it sits. On the left is something simple. That was a uh, router tray. And on the right is a little bit more complex. That's a 3D uh, image that was engraved. We didn't do it in our shop, but it is something that you can do. Computer numerical control. Okay, and the newest addition is our 3D printer. On the left, again, something simple. And we do have some yellow ones on our CNC table that Charlie has done. And on the right is something a little bit more complex. These are things that you can do right now with the equipment. Uh, lastly, on the micro is our uh, microelectronics. Uh, and that is both our Raspberry Pi and our Dunio. That is, again, geared more towards our model makers. And if you go out to the outside railroad, and you push some of those buttons and hear the sound, that was done with those two boards. Would you use Arduino or Raspberry Pi now, Charlie? Pico, Raspberry Pico. There you go, Raspberry Pi with Pico. Okay, uh, why do you want to join this in? Well, you want to learn some new skills, you want to learn new techniques, and you want to engage your imagination. We do meet on the first Wednesday of every month. That's our general meeting at five o'clock in the woodshop. Any questions? Thank you all. That's it. That just finishes up his charts. Basically, tells you what you uh, need to be able to, need to be a gold member. In the, you don't need to be a gold card member in the shop. You just have to be a member and have gone through their boss. I think in our boss, 
And then you can, uh, with your $20 membership, you can be a member of the tech SIG without actually being a member of the wood shop. Um, so that's, you know, basically how that works, similar to what we do with the railroaders. And the carvers, I guess, believe too. So um, just imagine that I'm Bob Bass this morning. Because <laughs> Bob is somewhere else. I think Bob looks at the calendar and he tells his wife what dates they're going to have big meetings, and then he figures out they're going to go somewhere on that day. <laughs> so um, Bob just wanted to bring us up to date with uh, what's going on. We've had our, e our annual P card training that was done. Um, last Thursday. Um, I thank you all that were there for that. Uh, we've done our, we don't need to make any updates to the lifestyles this year to our bylaws, so that was taken care of. And as I spoke to earlier, we released our updated ops manual in January. Uh, these are some dates going forward. We have our volunteer appreciation date, uh, dinner coming up in the pavilion on the 19th of April by invitation only. And as Kathy said, our open house is uh, on Saturday, November 2nd. <coughs> Any questions on that? <coughs> Final comments. First of all, I want you all to know that I've arranged so that the shop itself can be open at noon today instead of one. So I have management staff ready to be there. So we'll open the shop at noon. The afternoon shift will go like normal from noon to five. Uh, so the shop will be open at, as soon as we can get it open uh, so that we can get back to the shop and continue to make all those great projects. Um, we have plans going forward. We have a, a couple of, these are the dates going forward up until June as far as when our next coffees are. Our next one will be in March, uh, then April on the 22nd. These are typically the last Friday of the month. And so these will be in the shop. So. Um, Look forward to seeing you on those dates. Uh, the general meeting for the uh, annual identification of new uh, officers for the coming year and um, our presentation of the financial plan will be on the 14th of October. And that's done that early because we have a requirement to the community to basically have given them the new membership, uh, our new officers by the end of November. Um, and we usually give you a couple, three weeks to contemplate that list of uh, new officers before we actually take a vote. So now we come to the best part of the, the uh, morning, and that's uh, we're going to give away some um, drawings. And so if you get your tickets out. Everybody got a ticket? For the Home Depot card, um, are these the last four numbers? Yeah. Last four numbers, 2970. Mary Margaret. For the Lowe's gift card, last four numbers, 2926. All right. Very. <laughs> For the Longhorn Steakhouse this is something new. gift card, this is new, 2844. for a guild gift certificate. 2804. Oh, gee. Came in right before me, that's for sure. 2804.
Okay. So I'm going to give everybody one last chance to ask me any questions before we call it an end or ask the board member any question that you have before we leave. Kathy wants people to sign up over here. Yeah. And then we all, like Kathy said, she's got people already set up blocking the door so you can't get out <laughs> before you <laughs> sign up for an opportunity over there. Last year, after this meeting, all of my sheets were filled. They are not nearly I need you. We so, need you. and when Michelle speaks, everybody listens. And so, um, let's all get an opportunity. I mean, you don't have to necessarily leave, but if you sign up, it's, you're going to be part of what makes this deal happen, which is the products that we create for our sale. So, take the opportunity to sign up and join in one of the teams and get the work done but we also are looking for people that are willing to take on a little bit of responsibility and lead these projects and get them done and michelle is great with working with you and helping you organize etc so um we are ecstatic that you are back michelle because the energy that this lady has, after what she's gone through, is amazing, and we just thank you for being back, and thank you for taking on this responsibility. If there's no other questions, then thank you all for coming. It's been a great meeting, and some great questions, and we look forward to seeing you all in the shop. Don't forget the art show.